Google may have just changed the course of humanity forever. So this is the announcement that Google made right here, and it's about Willow, which is their new state-of-the-art quantum chip. We're gonna dive into this and see exactly why this is gonna change humanity forever. So the first thing is that Willow is able to reduce errors exponentially, meaning as they use more qubits or quantum bits, the errors will reduce, which is something that, as they state, has been pursued after for over 30 years with quantum computing. Then they go on to say that Willow performed a standard benchmark computation in under five minutes, and that is way faster than any modern computer or supercomputer can actually do it. So the fastest modern supercomputer is able to do the same computation in 10 septillion years, which is really just an unfathomable amount of time, and it vastly exceeds the age of the universe, as the article says. So the implications of this is incredibly profound. So this says, the Willow chip is a major step on a journey that began over 10 years ago. The vision was to build a useful large-scale quantum computer that could harness quantum mechanics, which is the operating system of nature to the extent that we know it today. That's another profound statement right there. And the fact that we're building quantum computers and have quantum chips that are viable, utilizing the operating system of nature is incredible. So I'm jumping down into the article a little more where it says that Willow's performance on this benchmark is astonishing, referencing the random circuit sampling benchmark. And it performed a computation in under five minutes that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers 10 septillion years. This is the actual number written out, wildly large. This mind-boggling number exceeds Time scales in physics and vastly exceeds the age of the universe, and it lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes, in line with the idea that we live in a multiverse. So again, going back to that original statement of the operating system of nature to the extent that we know it today is what quantum mechanics is and that we're harnessing quantum mechanics through this willow chip and the qubits or qubits or quantum bits on the actual chip and we're computating these problems or this random circuit sampling in this case benchmark in parallel universes so we do have to address errors before we move into the multiverse and the parallel universe statements a little bit more so let's dive into the errors real quick. Errors are one of the greatest challenges in quantum computing since qubits, the units of computation in quantum computers, have a tendency to rapidly exchange information with their environment, making it difficult to protect the information needed to complete a computation. Typically, the more qubits you use, the more errors will occur, and the system becomes more of a classical computer system that has a lot of different errors, which is why error handling is programmed into a lot of different programs. This system is very interesting in how it works. So down here in this paragraph, Today in Nature, we publish results showing that the more qubits we use in Willow, the more we reduce errors, the more quantum the system then becomes. So we're moving in the other direction instead of becoming a classical computing device, we're now moving more quantum, which is excellent for quantum computing. We tested ever larger arrays of physical qubits, scaling up from a grid of three by three to a grid of five by five, and then to a grid of seven by seven. And each time using our latest advancements in quantum error correction, we were able to cut the error rate in half. So they were able to achieve an exponential reduction in the error rate. And in the field of quantum mechanics and quantum computing, that's known as below threshold which is really where you have to be for quantum computing to become a viable option in the actual real world. So when it comes to the errors that they're talking about, the qubits are in a state somewhere between zero and one at the same time. 
these are in a superposition and they only collapse to a zero or a one upon observation, which is a fundamental mechanic of the quantum realm. Now these quibits, when they're in a superposition, are extremely fragile, and a lot of things can cause them to essentially error out of superposition or entanglement. And that can be anything from temperature or electromagnetic interference that can cause them to collapse before they are observed correctly as a zero or one and they can become an incorrect reading so that is an example of an error that can occur in a quantum computer so by decreasing errors you can increase the number of quibits while simultaneously decreasing errors whereas before when you introduce more quibits into the equation it typically also increased errors therefore scalability of these chips was previously not able to happen this is the breakthrough that we've been waiting for for quantum computing because now we can expand that into enterprise level systems that can compute on massive massive scales so this is a really interesting thing and this is a first in the field which is historic i mean this is one of the keys to a future that none of us really have the full knowledge of what is going to come maybe a few people do but this has opened so many doors to things that we may not even be able to comprehend at this point so this here is the quantum computing roadmap and they just hit milestone two and the next milestone is building a long-lived logical quibit. And the term long-lived might be interesting because I'm not sure how long-lived they're planning as the current quibits look like they're now approaching 100 microseconds. So that's a five times improvement over what it used to be. So if you 5X that, you're looking at 500 microseconds. So. I don't know exactly how long live they're planning, but I'm just not sure. But that's a really cool next milestone because if you can have the quibits live for longer, you can probably, if I'm thinking about it correctly, do a lot more complex computational tasks during a single superposition instead of recreating a superposition multiple times to allow that computation to complete. So all of this takes us back to the parallel universes statements and in line with the idea that we live in a multiverse. So to kind of understand those statements a little bit because it's all still theory as far as I know and nothing is really known for sure, but classical computers work in definitive zeros and ones. That's how they work. There's no in-betweens. There's no maybes, there's only zeros, and there's only ones. Quantum computers, on the other hand, work anywhere between zero and one, and they can be any configuration of zero and one at the same time, which is very difficult to wrap your head around and understand, but the term parallel universes and the multiverse come in because the theory is that these are computing different universes essentially where that problem that solution to the problem is solved in that universe and when it comes across a universe where the solution to the problem is correct or the outcome is what we want then it collapses that quibit into that solution or it observes that quibit to collapse it into a zero or a one based on whatever universe it found the solution in. That's my understanding of how it works. It's super, I've, I mean, just saying that is incredibly interesting to me but the fact that that is how it is working is incredible and the implications of that are incredible when you couple the coming of artificial general intelligence that is then running on or able to utilize a quantum computer such as what we're seeing now 
that is enterprise scaled and insanely quick and can solve complex algorithms and problems for humanity at ridiculously fast speeds we are going to see advancements in technology that we have never seen before so going back to that multiverse parallel universe explanation imagine you show this artificial general intelligence an x-ray that possibly has a cancerous tumor if it hasn't already figured out how to cure cancer it might be able to compute the exact treatment that you need to reach the end result of surviving and it will go through every universe of possibilities until it observes a universe where you live and it will collapse on what happened in that universe and produce that result and doctors and nurses would be able to follow that exact treatment plan so that you do survive that. Now, I think it will most likely cure cancer based on what I'm understanding about quantum computing and its implications on the future. I think that a lot of the things that we see today as problems will be completely solved by this. Um, again, I don't have a timeline for that, but that's just my personal belief is that in the future, a lot of the problems that we experience today are going to be solved coupling AGI with quantum computers. And I fully believe that this is our modern day Manhattan project. This is an incredible technological advancement in and of itself, this Willow chip, but coupling those two together is going to be incredible. And in the closeout paragraph of this blog post by Google, is super interesting because it kind of goes along with what I was just saying. It says, and this is the author of the article. His name is Hartmut Nevin, I believe is how you would say that. Obviously, I'm not 100% sure. So if I butchered that, I apologize. But he's the founder and lead of Google Quantum AI. And here's his final paragraph. My colleagues sometimes ask me why I left the burgeoning field of AI to focus on quantum computing. My answer is that both will prove to be the most transformational technologies of our time, but advanced AI will significantly benefit from access to quantum computing. And this is why I named our lab Quantum AI. And he goes on to say that quantum algorithms have fundamental scaling laws on their side as we're seeing with RCS. There are similar scaling advantages for many foundational computational tasks that are essential for AI. So quantum computation will be indispensable for collecting training data that's inaccessible to classical machines. And it goes on to explain a little bit more to the effect of similar things like helping us discover new medicines, designing more efficient batteries for electric cars, accelerating progress in fusion, uh, which is nuclear fusion, which is how the sun works and new energy alternatives. Many of these future game-changing applications won't be feasible on classical computers, but they're waiting to be unlocked with quantum computing. So this is incredible. It's an incredible time to be alive. Technology is insanely exciting, and the advancements that we're gonna see in the future, I mean, this year alone has been incredible with advancements and historic things that we've seen. This chip being one of them, the other one was the rocket being caught out of the sky with the chopstick tower by Elon Musk and SpaceX, which was incredible to watch. It's just, it's been a year of incredible advancements and incredible things happening. You just have to look for them and you have to look to the future of what is possible because it is going to be an incredible time. And I'm, I'm super excited to see where these advancements lead and the things that happen with them. But that's all the time I had for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's a little different than I normally do, but this is something I couldn't pass up. It's a super exciting topic. And I hope you found the value in learning a little bit about quantum computers and their current state and the potential future that we have with them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.